Okay, so how many of you know what a brand narrative is? Yeah, well, given today's discussion on user acquisition, that's not entirely surprising. Um, anyone know what their company's brand narrative is or have a sense for that? All right. Well, it's a good thing we're going to be talking about this today. Now, we are, we are all here because we use Adjust to track our attribution and analytics. And without it, we simply wouldn't understand how our marketing campaigns are performing, nor how our businesses were performing. But I want to remind us about something even more foundational, which is your brand narrative. Without it, you simply can't market to your customers and connect to them in a real way. So I'm Jessica. I lead marketing for KeepSafe software. And I knew I was doing a pretty good job within the, six, the first six months on the job when I had nailed or secured nine major media headlines for our company. And I'm going to walk you through the work I did so that you can do something similar. So KeepSafe software has a family of privacy and security apps. And our flagship app is a photo vault, which allows, allows people to hide their photos on their phone behind a password-protected pin screen. Now, right now, you guys might be thinking, hmm, privacy and security, that's not very sexy. Well, it's actually quite a bit sexier than you might think, and I'll get to that. But we're actually in the business of protecting personal space. And that's the brand category that I created. I'm, and I'm going to walk you through that process today. So here it is, the marketing funnel that we all know and love. And most of the time, we spend a lot of time in the bottom of the funnel talking about how we drive intent and conversion. And in fact, today has been no exception. But I want to remind us how critical it is to be feeding that funnel with awareness and interest. So this is a primer I like to use about startup marketing. We all know that when you're getting a startup off the ground, if you're lucky enough to achieve product market fit, you don't need to do any marketing at all, at least for a while. But eventually, that organic interest that you've generated is going to level off. And that's usually when we see companies add a paid marketing program. But even then, and this is one of the things we've talked about, you reach a scale at which point you just simply can't continue to stay revenue positive. And that's when we see companies add a content marketing program and brand awareness campaigns. So I'm going to talk to you about narrative building in two parts today. First, how you actually develop your brand narrative. And second, how you reach your audience with it. So I read a book called Play Bigger by Al Ramadan, Dave Peterson, and Christopher Lockhead. And what they say in Play Bigger is that the companies that actually position themselves that create brand categories for themselves do better. In fact, they do better to the tune of about 80% market share. And so what they posit is you have two choices. You can be positioned or you can position yourself. And you see a lovely 1984 Chrysler minivan behind me. Some of you may have had this amazing car growing up. And in 1984, Chrysler identified an issue that families had. Basically, families had two different types of vehicles that they could choose from. One was, you know, that full-on station wagon, which was relatively nimble to drive, actually, but not spacious enough. And then there was that 1970s van that we all know and love, and that was plenty spacious but not too nimble. 
And so in 1984, they did this revolutionary thing. They rolled out a new type of family vehicle, the minivan. And now, no matter who you are, you cannot avoid a minivan. Even I was not able to escape one. They are utterly ubiquitous. So Chrysler actually did win 80% of market share. And there are lots of companies that fall into this category. And so you want to define your consumer problem, you coin that solution, and then you tell the world. And that's when the share comes. So in KeepSafe's case, we were in this muddled category of privacy and security that means a lot of things to a lot of different people. But unfortunately, we didn't feel like it was conveying our true value to our customers. And that's why we went through this category design exercise so that we could actually position ourselves. And some of you may be in a category that your competitors have defined for you. And so I'm going to walk you through this process because it may actually help you as well. So the first part in defining your brand category is understanding where you've been. And in my case, my company had just gone through a branding exercise, and I inherited a great brand guidelines document, which did a great job of conveying to me what the brand attributes and the brand values were. And in fact, these two quotes were taken from that document. And they, they really convey what privacy means to our brand and what we want people to understand about our brand. Now, here you actually see our product strategy. So with KeepSafe Photo Vault, we can protect the privacy of what people have on their phones. And yesterday, we launched a virtual private network, KeepSafe VPN. And now we can actually protect the privacy of where they go on their phones. And in the future, you may see KeepSafe roll out additional apps protecting people's identities and their communications. Oops. OK, so these are our founders. And you can see that Zuhair Belcora, our CEO, is holding an American flag. And our CTO, Philip Berner, is holding the German flag. And Zuhair just became an American citizen. They're both from Germany. And I don't think it's coincidental that they started a privacy company here in the US. Germany, for those of you who don't know, really have strong values around privacy. So when I joined the company, I sat down with Zuhair, and he told me a little bit about how KeepSafe came to be. And what he explained was that when he came to the US, he was a product manager working for a Korean company. And the company had a really conservative culture. But on the weekends, because Zuhair was German, he would often spend a lot of time drinking beer with Philip, usually. And when he would come back to work on Monday, because he was a PM, he would pull out his phone to show someone a whiteboard photo. And he would invariably have to swipe past a few photos he had taken over the weekend of him partying with Philip. And he was deeply embarrassed. And what he explained to me is that privacy is all about context. In one case, he would have been happy to show those photos to a friend or even a family member. But in this conservative company culture, he was really embarrassed. And so he explained to me that that's really how KeepSafe came to be. And what he wanted to do was create a company where people felt accepted and where privacy solutions were simple. So you cannot develop a brand narrative without talking to your users. This is the critical part of understanding why they use your product in their own words. And this is a picture of the amazing UX designer I get to work with every day, Jen Driggers, and one of our users, Johnny, who recently stopped by the office. Now, Jen and I have conducted a ton of user interviews together. And what we learned from talking to people was they're not so worried about being hacked. They're less worried about that data security piece what concerns them most 
It's having people who are already in their lives invade their privacy. They want to feel like they can be who they are, who they truly are, and they don't want to feel judged. And they don't like the stress that a privacy invasion puts on their relationships. They also explain to us how much they trust KeepSafe. And as a result, we can bake that into our brand narrative. Now, the other part of getting these anecdotal user stories is, of course, getting data. And so I conducted a demographic study pretty early on, and I actually got 6,000 responses. And as I started to dig into them, they were very, very interesting. I, I was learning about who our users are, because it's a privacy app that's kind of difficult to do. So I asked them questions like, you know, what their gender was and their age. And what I found was 80% were men between the ages of 18 and 45. Over half of them were married with children. And so I was wondering, what are they using this app for? <laughs> so I had one open-ended question, which was, what is the primary reason you use KeepSafe? And this is what they said. Wouldn't you like to know? I prefer not to answer. To protect my children from things on my phone they shouldn't see. To keep pictures of my beautiful girlfriends safe from the world. Sexy photos, nudes, nudies, naked pics, nudes, bro to keep all my baseball cards together. Yeah, right. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, it's pretty sexy. But what this really revealed to me is you know, your brand can be about a lot of, of far-reaching aspirational qualities, but it also can be about a killer use case, and KeepSafe had one. So this part takes a little longer, and this is when you take all of the inputs that you now have and you start to really synthesize and think about what your brand's value is. And in my case, I started to think about the space that KeepSafe was giving people to explore, to be who they really were. And I also started to think about this model of personal space. So some of you who have visited foreign countries may know a little bit about personal space because different cultures have different standards, and sometimes that can make us feel uncomfortable. But generally speaking, in your intimate space, you allow lovers and maybe your own kids. You need a little more space between people when it's a close friend or a family member, and even more space when it's an acquaintance that you're just meeting maybe at a cocktail party. And this is a good representation of public space. I'm on the stage, you guys are in the audience, we don't really know each other yet, so we need a lot of space. So this is where I came to the conclusion that the category that KeepSafe is in, it's not so much privacy and security, but it's actually personal space protection. That's what we're helping people do with our apps. So the next part, is you're going to write down your narratives. And we had three that I generated. And basically, these are like the movie trailer for your narrative. And you condense them down and then test them. So we tested ours on Facebook and YouTube. And we kept our reach and impressions similar and then looked at the engagement rates. And what was interesting was there were actually two of the three narratives were neck and neck in terms of the engagement rates. So at that point, we pulled the audience insights. And one of the narratives was very represent representative of who our users were today. Men, ages 18 through 45, they tended to skew more towards Android. There was another narrative that had a more even gender split, skewed a little younger, and it was more 
dominant in terms of iOS. And of course, that, those are KeepSafe's higher value users. And so that was actually the narrative we went with. Um, because that was more representative, not of where we were today, but where we wanted to be. So I'm gonna play uh, our hot off the presses brand narrative video so that you guys can see sort of how it all came together. Just because you like to share sometimes doesn't mean you don't want privacy all the time. What if there was a place on your phone where personal stuff stayed private and you could be sure that what was meant for your eyes only stayed that way? There is. Feel safe and free to just do you. Keep safe protects personal space. We put your privacy first to make space for the real you. Be yourself. Keep safe. Okay. So you can see that we were going for more even gender distribution, slightly younger, towards you know a demographic that's gotten very comfortable sharing on Instagram, but maybe still feels like privacy is an important value. So now you have done your research, you've developed a brand category, you understand your brand's value, and you've put together some brand narratives and tested them. Now we're gonna get to that emerging interest and awareness piece and this is all about how you're going to tell your brand narrative so that you can reach that audience. So the first part is you're going to follow news stories in your category. So these are some of the stories that are relevant to Keep Safe that I follow on a regular basis. Privacy and politics, hacks, there seems to be a new one every week, whether it's a security breach like Equifax or celebrity nude <laughs> uh, hacks, which also happen a lot. Tech trends, privacy is very popular. People are questioning you know, how various technologies are going to impact their privacy. A good example being the iPhone X and facial recognition opening up your phone. So when you start to track these stories, they're a great insight into the types of journalists that might be covering you. They're actually one and the same. And as you start to track them, what you'll find is if you have a strong brand narrative, you'll actually have a point of view on some of these stories. And that's exactly what you can pitch to these journalists. Now, you guys may know journalists are neither the most well-paid nor perhaps the most well-appreciated in our industry. And so reading their pieces thoughtfully and commenting on them and really personalizing your pitch, even with you know, a few compliments in there, can go a long way. I'd be lying if I told you that everyone was gonna write back and write your stories. You're gonna develop this beautiful one-sided relationship where you keep reading their pieces and you keep following up with different perspectives and different compliments and maybe eventually someone will write a piece. But what I've been talking about is your earned channels. You, of course, also have own channels like your blog and your social media outlets. And these are also a great place for you to start to really explore your narrative and use it. And so these are four examples of blog posts I wrote for us that were sort of relevant and timely on news stories. Four ways to protect your privacy when you travel, protect yourself from iCloud hacks, what doxing is and why you should care, and keep safe's privacy policy in four sentences. And so you can really refine that narrative as you actually write about it. And you can also look at your blog stats and your engagement stats on your social media channels to know what topics are really resonating with your audience. And then this is the best step in the whole process, which is when you sit back and just reap the rewards. Um, these are the nine headlines that we got in that six month period. And some of them were stories that journalists wrote about Keep Safe. Others were quotes that we got our CEO sort of commenting on something relevant in the news. And then still others were cross-posted blog posts. So that's it. Um, all you need to do 
<laughs> to develop your brand narrative and make sure that it's effective is research your brand, understand its value, and test it, and then be sure to tell your story. Thanks.